Hello, my, ma my name is Mary Trevino, and um, I'm here today to minister on behalf of my testimony, uh, what I went through. I did uh, 33 flat years in prison, incarcerated, which is a long time. And um, I just want to open up with um, uh, a very encouraging uh, scripture that I evidently ran through last night. The Spirit put it in my heart, you know, I was like, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? But this is what He really put it in my heart. It says, Matthew 25, 36 says, I was naked and you closed me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. I mean, this is just perfect, you know. And to what I see in my life, I mean, that's what God is all about, perfect. You know, He's perfect. He's never wrong. I mean, He's always there uh, when, I mean, I'm talking about me, you know. I mean, the most important part of my life, what I went through when I was in prison, is uh, when I went in there, I had a lot of hate for everybody. Um, I didn't want to deal with nobody. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was just hating everything for something that I had committed, which was wrong. So I'm here to uh, spiritually say that um, evidently it's good. I thank God. I mean, you guys, it's wonderful because when you're, un when you're not really, really sure of what you want out of life, you're in denial. But when God works in your heart, in your life, you know, God puts you in that correct spot. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You work one day at a time, it's like a stairway to heaven. So what actually God did with me, you know, He used me as an example, you know, to you guys and you women out there, I mean. And I know that a lot of y'all had gone through what I've been through, so evidently I believe that my testimony uh, can save somebody else's life, you know. And evidently, you know, uh, you guys, you ladies, if you're, when you see this, you know, I just want to encourage y'all, you know, to um, seek the Word of God, you know, surrender your lives totally to Him, repent, you know, that's the most important part. When you surrender your life, you totally just drop on your knees and you just tell God, God, here I am, take me like I did. I mean, I was like, I started in my addictions, I started uh, uh, using a, a needle, cocaine, then marijuana, and to me it seemed that one uh, addiction led to another one. You know, when I was doing marijuana, I'm like, nah, this is not strong enough. So Satan induced me to a heavier high, which was cocaine. Then I got tired, I overdosed three or four times. God picked me up from the mess and keep giving me chances. You know, that's the good part about God in my life. It didn't matter how much I went through. Let me tell you, I mean, sometimes I think of myself like, God, why are you taking so much of me? I mean, I mean, look at me, I'm a mess. And you keep forgiving me, you know? And then evidently that right there brings me down to saying like the most encouraging part of the Bible to me, and that's what I want to induce you guys and you women out there, you know, to uh, remember when God was getting crucified, when he was falling on his knees, and all these people were cursing him, throwing rocks at him, spitting at him, he just looked at him, and what did he say? Nothing. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could be like that? I mean, people could just tell us something, especially me, I'm a talker. They would tell me something, I would like, Mary, please be quiet. Just, you know, don't say anything. But no, I had to say something and get in trouble, and there I go, to jail. Um, the, the worst part about me was, like, they were always... Uh, looking for me, and I was always like running from the law, <laughs> running. 
And my, my last time that I was caught, you know, I was wanted. I ran from the law seven years and um, failure to appear in court, broke my probation, broke everything. And I mean, it was just terrible. You know, I was mowing this lady's yard and I was real happy singing everything. I'm like, great. I mean, when I get paid, I'm going to get paid. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to get high. You know, I'm going to party. Not this time, God said, nope, not this time, Mary. You know, and okay, I felt something tap me on the shoulder, and all of a sudden I turned around, and it was um, the deputy. He said, Mary Trevino. I said, I'm not Mary Trevino, I'm Lenora, because I have a twin sister. They said, no, Lenora would not do the things you do, so you're it. Come on, let's go. I said, well, wait, wait till I get paid at least, you know. And I was still going to throw the trash, and I kept looking back, and I was like, if they turn around, I'm going to make a run for it. You know, that's, that was me. I mean, I was terrible. I was a mess. But um, the best part about me is that every time that I got in trouble, I mean, didn't matter what, didn't matter what I did. The best thing about me was like, I would realize what I had done wrong. And I would feel so bad, you know. After getting baptized and everything, you know, the last time I got out of prison, uh, I got baptized and went home. I was feeling real good. And I mean, my heart was just uplifted with the Word of God. There comes nighttime and there comes the devil. Mary, you want to go to club? I said, all right, let's go. My favorite addiction was uh, crack cocaine. So that night um, I went out. First thing, that little whisper in my ear, come on, Mary, let's get a 20, let's get high. I went and got it and let me tell you, I mean, I felt so bad. Actually, I think my pastor, uh, Pastor Stephen remembers that because I told him. You know, I, I, and I even confessed it uh, with Pastor Gary from Restoration uh, Church. And uh, I went up to them and I told them, you know what, I did something very bad. But the first one that I really told and kneeled down to was God. Because that's what we're supposed to do. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to go ask him for forgiveness or her for forgiveness because I did wrong. No. The first person we got to ask for forgiveness, God is always first. God is always there. And God is the only one that is going to save us. Nobody but God. So after I did that, I felt a little bit better, you know. And then I went to church and Pastor Stephen was there and I went up. He's my big brother in Christ and he's always after me. He keeps me in line. But anyway, you know, uh, he, I told him, Pastor Stephen, I committed a crime. And he said, what do you mean? I said, yeah, I went and relapsed on the $20 rock, but I already didn't ask God to forgive me. That's the most wonderful part that I have in my life. I do wrong, but I notice. And right there and then, you know, I lift up. I'm not going to be like Peter, you know, that uh, I'm going to drop my faith and fall off the boat and drown. No, I'm a survivor. I'm going to get up, I'm going to keep on swimming, and I'm going to keep on looking for God, seeking God. You know, I mean, that's the most important ti uh, time that um, we can say God is an awesome God. And then uh, here's another inspiration uh, verse right here, Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the broken hearts, to proclaim liberty to the captivity and the opening of the prisoners to those who are, who are bound. So what does that mean? To those who are in bond are those that are still incarcerated. They're the ones that are still being mistreated. They're still the ones that are being treated wrong and everything, you know. And me, when I was in prison, you know, I feel for the, the, the people friends and things that are in prison right now, you know that, I mean, evidently when, when we go out into the prisons, you know, we minister and we're always like praying for them and everything. And, you know, I always tell them, you know, I mean, just put God first in your life. 
you know, I've had a couple of real awful things that had happened to me in the past last two weeks. Um, I was in the hospital for a real bad infection, you know, that came up in my blood. And um, evidently, I had no white cells. I had no red cells, no white ones to, to fight that infection, that poison in my in my veins. And um, I called my pastor. That's the first one I called. But I called upon God that night in prayer with all my heart. I told him, God, I'm your daughter, remember? I have already surrendered. And I want to be healed in order to get out there and tell them what you did for me. Now look at all this stuff that uh, with the coronavirus is going on. People are believing that a mask, gloves, all this stuff is going to cure them. Well, the law is the law here, but the law with God is another law. And we're supposed to respect both of them. It doesn't matter. But to me, I said, now, if God could heal me from hepatitis C, gave me a, a new liver, and then from that night I called Pastor Stephen again, <laughs> and he said, now what, Mary? I said, well, I started crying. I always cry. I don't have enough white cells. I'm going to die, and this and that, and all this. He prayed for me. I felt better. And um, I told God, God, I mean, I just want you to lift me up high, you know, to where from right now to the morning, I want to see it. I want to feel it. I'm the patient. I want to see it. I, evidently, I was challenging God, you know. I told God, I want to see it. And he showed me. From night to morning, the doctor went in there running, my nurses and everything. He's like, Mary, Mary. I'm like, what? I'm going to die, right? They said, no. We don't know how it happened. We don't know how it happened or who did it or what did it. But you have a full blood count. And it's up high, real high. And everything is so back to normal. And, you know, the first thing I told him, I smiled and looked up and I said, thank you, God. That was my God that did it. The next one is Hebrews 13.3. Remember those who are in prison as though a prisoner with them and those who are mistreated since you are also in the body. That's what I'm talking about, prisoners being mistreated. You know, when I was in prison, you know, I was always arguing with the guards and everything. And uh, I kept telling them, now nah, this and that, I wanted to know more than the guards. Then that night I kneeled down to God and I said, God, what, what can I do so those guards can leave me alone? He said, don't say nothing. So evidently I learned how to be quiet. I learned how to respect the law. I learned how to get along with the, with the warden. There at the last minute, I was working in the uh, warden's office and I didn't even know how I did it, you know. I didn't like them or nothing and I came to being real close friends with them, you know. And they, they didn't, you know, I mean, I did all the rest of my time. Evidently, I did it like, like they say, sitting on the commode, <laughs> you know. And that was really, really good, you know, to know that God had my back even though I was incarcerated. And that's the one thing I want to encourage everybody today, you know, I mean, to... When you're really suffering something, I mean, don't be a crybaby like I was. Because you know what that is? When we cry out to the Lord, and you really, really cry out to the Lord, you know, sometimes, you know, we've all been through this. Sometimes we sit there and we cry out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm so sick. Well, how come you don't hear my prayers and this and that? Sit down for a minute. Evidently, you're not doing something you're supposed to do. You're not fully there with God. You're not fully committing your life to God. Me, I have learned now more than ever, you know, God is my everything. This is one thing I want to leave you, you guys and you ladies with, you know, put God in your life first. Take God with you everywhere you go. When you grab that hand, don't let it go. Just tell them, God, don't let me go, don't let me go. And like I say, the warning is not going to open them doors to your cell. The guards sure ain't going to open it up. 
to me within my heart. I'm leaving this with you guys. God has the solution for this. God has that golden key that's going to set you free like he did me. So evidently, I just thank y'all so much for for taking the time to listen to me. And um, I just thank God, you know, for being here and saying some encouraging words to you guys and you ladies. God bless y'all.